Good afternoon and welcome to our feedback session on limited health care. My name is Corinne Waldau. I'm the Economic Development Director for the Boulder Chamber. And I want to thank you all for committing your time to this feedback session. And I'd like to thank our Boulder County Chambers and Economic Development Agencies for partnership in putting this event together. We would also like to thank Boulder County Public Health for, her, for hearing our community's interest and in working hard to get our businesses open and our economy running again, but in a safe manner for our business owners, their workforce, and their customers. We will start today's presentation with general information about the Safer at Home timeline, safe workplace practices, and move into specific required public protection steps for the limited health industry. Please note that some of these practices and requirements are mandates from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, and there is no possible adjustment. And there are others that Boulder County Public Health feels are critical for the safety and health of our community. So it's likely that there isn't a chance to change them, but it's okay to identify gaps, to ask questions, and to create dialogue on the strategies for meeting each of these public health conditions. Let's begin today's presentation with Jesse Rounds, who is the Limited Health Liaison with Boulder County Public Health. Good morning, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Jesse Rounds. I'm uh, the Liaison for Limited Health uh, with uh, Boulder County Public Health. And um, thank you, Corinne, for the introduction. Um, so, just trying to get going here. Oh, there we go. Uh, so just to start, um, just to go over the agenda for today's uh, meeting, um, what I want to do is give you an update on the current status and timelines for businesses, uh, go over the industry specific and some general uh, compliance checklist items, and then I want to spend as much as time as we can talking about uh, or answering any questions you might have, uh, and there are a whole team of us here to answer those questions. Um, so um, ask away in the um, Q&A and comment sections. So what we've heard so far is uh, that businesses want to be involved in uh, how we move forward with um, our COVID-19 response. You want to operate safely, but you want a seat at the table and you want clarity from us and from other government authorities. You want us to avoid blanket policies like this uh, the stay-at-home order was very uh, across the board, and we're hoping that the safer-at-home order and, and the variations that will be there will, will address some of those concerns about blanket policies. Um, you want an outline on what the process is going to be, um, what's coming next, and then uh, sort of specifically rules about masks. And then, I mean, really, it's, this, is, this is our chance to help build public confidence uh, in our industries and our commercial operations in the county. So just a quick look at the timeline. Uh, the stay-at-home order was put in place at the state level on March 26th. Uh, on April 24th, Boulder County maintained the stay-at-home order, but allowed curbside pickup for uh, retail. And uh, as discussed, uh, on uh, May 9th, we uh, are expecting to go into uh, the safer at home uh, protocol uh, order that um, was put forth by the state. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today, the, the checklist surrounding that. Uh, so really we're looking here at um, the move towards safer at home. And really this is a, a process. Um, like I said, on the 24th, we started with uh, curbside pickup and now we're moving on the 9th to um, allowing some limited opening opportunities and I'll get a little into that. But really this is gonna be a long-term process. Um, we won't be uh, fully open likely until there's a vaccine or until there's treatment, um, until we reach a state where most of us can um, interact safely. Uh, so, right now, we're in stay at home. May 9th, we'll be transitioning, hopefully, to safer at home. Uh, the um, curbside um, 
changes were really for retail businesses. Uh, and right now we're in the process, public health and our community are in the process of preparing for safer at home. And that's really what we're here to talk about. And also trying to um, find out from you everything we can provide uh, that will make it so that on the 9th, you're able to um, open up uh, and um, in the limited way we can. So what is safer at home? Uh, it's really, for, at a personal level, it's uh, maintaining a lot of the stay at home regulations. We are still encouraging people to stay indoors, stay around your houses, um, but there are changes for a limited number of uh, industries, retail, field services, personal services, limited healthcare, which is what we're talking about today, and offices. Um, so what are limited healthcare? This is a pretty long list, um, and I know that there have been a lot of questions about some of the limited healthcare services being a lot like personal services. Uh, and really the, the difference is limited healthcare services um, that might be personal services uh, are carried out in a healthcare setting or for health provision of health services. Um, whereas uh, personal services are uh, non-healthcare related. Uh, so I wanted to just go over a couple things um, that Safer at Home has set forth as general guidance for all businesses that will be opening. Um, things like deputizing a workplace coordinator who will, um, who, who sort of has uh, sort of extensive knowledge on the protocols and the checklist that we'll be talking about today that can provide um, some guidance to both uh, coworkers and to customers. Um, maintaining a six foot distance, that social distancing rule is not changing um, and we wanna encourage people to continue to maintain that. Uh, frequently sanitizing all high touch areas. I'll go into a little bit more detail for limited healthcare in particular uh, as we go through these slides. Um, and posting signage uh, for both employees and customers is really important. Uh, and then ensuring proper ventilation of spa indoor spaces. Uh, avoiding gatherings of more than 10 people. The office uh, um, guidance uh, that was discussed earlier today and it will be available on the checklist um, is uh, that either you reduce the work staff in the office space to 50% of normal or 10 people, whichever is, no more than 10 people, whichever is lower. Um, we're really looking for uh, encouraging social distancing with that level. Um, another um, requirement is uh, workplace temperature monitoring. Um, the checklist has resources uh, for how to monitor and how to keep track of that day to day. Um, and then again, uh, that sanita sanitizing uh, workspaces and break rooms, just the, all the spaces that are used every day. And then wearing gloves and masks. A lot of the communities have already required gloves and masks or masks for both employees and customers. And uh, there may be more communities going in that direction soon. So the compliance checklist, which you should have received already or you may receive after this meeting, uh, is uh, voluntary, but compliance with the orders is mandatory. Uh, the checklist is really a self-certification tool for you and your customers to be aware of what uh, can be done and should be done in your workplace uh, to promote safety. Uh, it's a compliance aid and a way to communicate with your, with your customers. Uh, there will be a public poster that goes at the, um, the chamber and Boulder County Public Health are working together now to produce those posters uh, and they will be going out to the community um, next week is my understanding. So enforcement is uh, an important question here. Um, we're asking for voluntary compliance uh, with the order. Uh, and we're gonna assume compliance. We're not checking on businesses that adopt, that take the checklist and start using it. Uh, and um, 
we are, when we receive complaints or concerns or questions even, we're looking to educate first. Our, that's our role uh, as public health. Um, we may ask for compliance with the checklist over time. Again, this is an evolving situation and we're looking for ways to support the community and businesses moving forward. Um, and then we do have the ability, public health has the ability to issue orders to close or pursue civil action if necessary to protect the public. So again, limited health care, those businesses that provide health care uh, healthcare um, services uh, in a uh, practice setting. Um, the, this is the a sort of an overview of the checklist that we're going to provide and it's broken down into workplace, employees, and customers. Uh, and these are um, ways for you to make sure that you're uh, remaining in compliance with the orders. So what we're asking is uh, sanitizing work surfaces and equipment um, conducting symptom and temperature checks. Uh, there are, there's guidance on the website or on the checklist about that, as well as uh, my understanding is uh, the Chamber and Boulder County Public Health are going to be uh, releasing resources at the state level or that come from the state level for accessing maybe some of those um, tools that are hard to get. Social distancing, the six foot uh, minimum uh, is still in place. And we ask that workplaces post signages, signage providing information about both the checklist and COVID-19. For employees in the limited healthcare setting, this is a bit different from possibly other industries. We're asking that medical grade PPE be worn, um, masks and gloves, and particularly with gloves between customers, we ask that you change gloves and wash, hand, wash your hands. And in uh, practices that have uh, separate rooms to see uh, patients. We're talking about cleaning and sanitizing your workspaces between appointments. So those are those really high volume spaces that really need to be cleaned on a regular basis. For patients, if you can continue to provide telehealth, we encourage that. Um, uh, and appointments and um, appointments will be required. Walk-ins are, are, are not okay in this situation. And um, the state is, is pursuing this idea of the virtual waiting room where customers would wait in the, patients would wait in the parking lot or outside waiting for uh, an invite into the space. That way you can monitor the number of people in the room at any one time. Um, requiring patients to wear some sort of face covering or mask. This is especially true for those high contact services uh, and in addition for high contact services, uh, the state's requiring that you do symptom checks for patients in those cases. Uh, that's to protect both the practitioner and the patient. Um, so that's the checklist for those things. And um, now we're at the phase where um, what we're looking for is feedback from you uh, on the checklist. And again, the checklist is a Google document that's going to be editable by any and all who are invited to it and you will receive an, a link to that document. Please add your comments there. Uh, we can address questions through that document and we can uh, try to edit and, and improve the document based on feedback from all of you. Um, but, and we're also looking for information about challenges your industry might be facing uh, through this safer at home order and um, if there's value uh, to a weekly industry work group. And we'd love to hear that uh, in this conversation because um, that's something that we'd love to set up with the Boulder Chamber. And then I, uh, last really here, um, we're looking today in this conversation for any feedback, any questions, uh, how can we help make the checklist more useful for you? Uh, and, hmm. Oh, there's more. <laughs> um, so I guess um, this is really just more detail about what we were, what I was just talking about. What are the challenges for you? Uh, what supports do you need? Uh, and is there value in that industry work group? If you have additional questions uh, after this, please use either our COVID violations email address. Uh, it does, it's violations, uh, 
uh, is maybe a little specific, we are answering questions through that from the public, or you can call our call center 8 p.m. 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, and our next session, I believe, is at noon on May 5th, and that's a link to that um, that I think we got from Corin uh, this morning. So, and I believe that's all I've got. Uh, oh, information sources. Uh, BoulderCounty.org is a great source. The Chamber of Commerce has been super helpful getting information out and connecting us with all of you. Industry associations like OSHA, um, or I'm sorry, not like OSHA. Industry associations are a great source. Licensing, licensing agencies like OSHA or even uh, the Department of Regulatory Agencies, uh, the Colorado Department of Regulatory Agencies has a lot of great information on their website. City websites are great. And then a tool that we've been using a lot is the covid19.colorado.gov website. That's all I've got. Happy to answer questions. Um, thanks. Great, Jesse. Please start sending in your questions in the Q&A feature. Um, I think one of the things we have some people that would like to clarification on is, again, go through that massage studio yes. clarification. Yeah. Here, I'll, if it's I'll head between back to that. Personal um, services, uh, this, particularly this person asked, said we're a nine room massage only studio. Where does gotcha. that fall? Uh, so I would think, and Zach and, and any other experts on here, uh, if you want to chime in, um, a, a, massage studio, a massage only studio would be considered a personal services studio unless the, unless the massage is being prescribed by a medical professional. Uh, really, the limited healthcare uh, field is, is specific to medical procedures or procedures that result from a medical diagnosis. Yeah, I would just add that um, you know if uh, massage therapy services are ordered by a healthcare professional, um, you know the the massage studio should consult Executive Order D twenty 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 seven. All right, so we had a question about what the temperature cutoff. Uh, is being recommended. I know that co the state site says 100.4, but maybe if you could run through some of the things that happens in a health check, that would be helpful for some of our uh, listeners. Absolutely. Zach, I don't, do you want to try and take this question or I'm happy Sure, to yeah. Um, there is a, a great uh, website. Um, if, if folks have not already seen it, including a video how to uh, at covid19.colorado.gov backslash symptom dash screening. Um, it's also discoverable um, in looking through the, uh, the website there. Um, and we will share that information, the link out. Um, but uh, temperature screening uh, is 100.4 is an automatic no-go. Um, though, uh, you know, we should mention that, you know, if you're using an infrared uh, temperature screener uh, and someone has just come in from outside, um, you know, they may have an elevated temperature, uh, so um, would you know it's going to be right a little bit dependent on the day and and, and the activity. Um, but would recommend putting in a, a procedure in place for uh, you know perhaps a, a, a waiting area under an awning or um, uh, you know asking the the individual to come back you know in in five minutes if uh, if you know they they have an elevated temperature, but uh, it's, you know, it may be because it's just simply, you know, it's 100 degrees outside. Um, <clears throat> so for the, for the process there, uh, you know, you want to maintain physical distancing um, uh, throughout the process. Uh, and then obviously, you know, better to use uh, a contactless infrared uh, temperature monitor rather than, um, you know, one that requires contact, which would need to be cleaned. Uh, between every individual uh, whose temperature was taken. And then of course you also want to screen for uh, you know any other um, uh, symptoms such as dry coughs, sore throat, uh, shortness of breath. And I will put the uh, website to which I was referring in the chat now. 
already did it for you there, Zach. So. Ah, this is the great collaboration we're talking about. Yes. Uh, but you, it leads us to our next question, which is, how do I access PPE? Where can I get medical grade PPE right now? My usual vendors are all back ordered. Yeah, that's a, that's a problem. Um, I wish I had a, a, a great solution for you. Uh, I do not. Um, you know, this is going to, this is a problem that's likely to get worse before it gets better. Uh, we, Boulder County Public Health is working on putting together a resource of vendors that we've had success with. Um, however, uh, you know, we expect uh, that as, you know, Boulder County, state of Colorado, other states across the nation uh, continue to loosen restrictions and open up more. Our demand for the limited supply is only going to grow. Um, so I unfortunately don't have good news there. Uh, but we will share the, the list next week. Uh, I would encourage you all not to wait for our list to come out, but to continue searching. Um, because even once our list comes out, you know, then we're going to have a, a consolidated list and directing a whole bunch of folks to then access uh, through those sources as well. So there's no guarantee of continued availability through our list. So um, yeah, it's kind of a kind of a non-answer answer, but uh, it's a problem. Um, we're trying to help, uh, but it's just, there's simply not enough supply. One other piece is that the state of Colorado, some partners are putting together a Colorado marketplace for system supplies. Oh. Uh, and as soon as we have that information, we'll send that out as well. So we have another question. Uh, we two therapists do neuromuscular therapy or myofacial release primarily for serious pain issues, but are not in a doctor's office. Can we open our practice? So, uh, I mean, I think if, again, if, it, if it's being, uh, if it's been prescribed by a, a medical professional, then yes. Uh, otherwise you would be, I believe under the personal services. And I would just add that personal services um, can open as well. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a little different um, uh, requirements and criteria for the two. So the answer is yes, you can open your practice uh, regardless. On that, we had a question come in the chat, which trying to monitor both. Um, do you have, since we have some people on this call that may fit into the personal services, is there a difference in the PPE or should we wait until the personal services call for the two different um, sections. I, I don't know that answer off the top of my head. Yeah, same. I, we, we'd have to look at that and study that. It's a good question. Uh, you know, uh, erring on the side of caution, you know, whichever is more restrictive uh, is never a bad idea. Uh, you know, all of this is about, you know, trying to be careful and save lives um, in the end. So, um, yeah, but we don't know the answer to that question. We'd have to uh, compare the two side by side. This and that one is at four o'clock today for anybody listening that would like to join that one as well. And, and this, this is Lane. I can, I can try and answer that one for you. Okay. It, it is not the same level of requirement. So the, the personal services uh, has a lesser requirement. It doesn't require the medical grade masks. Gotcha. And I think there was another chat question related to that is could you, as part of a healthcare system, open without the required PPE, and I think the answer to that is no, you need to have the, the required PPE. Those are all minimum. Yeah. Uh, there is a question about the checks, the health checks, if they can be self-checked with infrared or does it have to be done by an employee? So the, there's a couple problems with um, self-checks with an infrared camera uh, or an infrared temperature monitor, um, making sure you've got the positioning right also, um, you know, if you're having every employee touch that device, uh, then you're going to have to have it cleaned between every employee. Um, so the best practice would be have it done uh, by an employee, you know, particularly if, you know, if you're thinking about having customers perform self checks, then, um, you know, then that would need to be cleaned uh, every, every customer. So the best practice would be to do it uh, by an employee. There was a question that came in that said if they're under personal services, should they attend this discussion later today? My recommendation would probably be yes. Uh, we answered some of the questions, but the checklists are a little different. And so if you're able to, I think the four o'clock call would be valuable. Uh, 
Does, can anybody answer the question, is rolfing structural integration then like massage not recommended by a doctor also in personal services? Yes. Yeah. Um, Zach, do you want to uh, take the question about the pools? Um, okay, yeah. Um, so the question is, uh, private swimming pool uh, with two large indoor pools teaching uh, uh, survival, aquatic survival, um, teach private lessons one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the, under the current order, uh, the current safer at home order, uh, there is uh, no allowance for indoor uh, swimming pools. Uh, however, um, you know, there, there is some gray area there and we would want to um, you know, look at that with our attorneys. Um, but as the, the safer at home order reads, um, the pools that are permissible are um, pools and hotels uh, or HOAs or um, uh, uh, apartment complexes that are limited to the guests and residents at those facilities. Uh, as well, um, there's uh, outdoor recreation is permitted um, and outdoor pools could fall under that outdoor recreation category with uh, physical distancing uh, in mind. Um, so outdoor pools by uh, our interpretation and by our attorney's interpretation uh, could be permitted with restrictions, um, but there's nothing in there that, that specifically addresses indoor pools. They appear to fall under um, the gym category, uh, which is not permitted. Uh, but for any, you know, for that specific uh, question, I encourage the uh, the commenter to contact us at covidviolations at bouldercounty.org, uh, and we can look more deeply into your uh, specific situation. Okay, we have a question that came that in that says, I work with patients who are hard of hearing and some are deaf. What's recommended since medical grade PPE doesn't allow facial cues and lip reading? To be honest, I have not, I, I haven't seen anything in the literature about that yet. Um, it's something that we can look into and get back to you about, definitely. So okay. if we can, get contact information, I, I would be happy to look into that. The Unless next question. You, you have some guidance from the previous. Uh, no, I, yeah, I, I would rather follow up um, with more specific recommendations. I mean, you can think of, um, you know, having a, um, an auto transcriber service uh, going, uh, certainly would be one option, but um, I'm sure the others have, have thought about this more than Jesse and I have. And, would like to research that information and get back to you. Great, and just to follow up, if there's any unanswered questions, um, we are capturing all the questions and we'll be able to follow up on those. Uh, the next question actually ties to a larger question, but this question is, can you clarify working with older populations? There are some elder clients that wanna begin receiving work, but with current safer at home regs, do you think we should wait longer to working with this population? And I think part two is, uh, talk a little bit about the at-risk, you know, if you have employees that fall into some of those categories as well. Right, right, right. So um, for the stay at home or the safer at home regulations continue to uh, discourage um, or, or the order still requires that uh, vulnerable populations uh, sort of stay in the stay at home order um, category. Uh, and that's for their protection. Um, in terms of, um, and that's that's true for employees as well. Uh, there are protections for employees um, who fall into those categories. Um, and I encourage you to look those up uh, through CDPHE. Um, in terms of receiving work, there is guidance about at-home health care. Um, on our check at the bottom of the uh, limited healthcare checklist, there are a couple links to more information about that. I don't want to speak to details about that 
um, beyond saying that that's the, the state has provided some guidance on that. Um, but, uh, you know, it, we're really trying to protect those uh, vulnerable populations. So, or, so trying to um, keep them in the uh, stay at home order category. And I, I would add, um, you know, consider doing, um, you know, like some grocery stores are doing, you know, hours just for vulnerable populations, um, you know, folks who, who, you know, presumably uh, we hope are, are, are taking extra care um, around uh, their health and, and potential exposure. Um, also, you know, I think it would be good to have a, you know, an open on, and honest conversation with, um, you know, those, those clients, uh, you know, is it worth the risk to them? Um, and, and, you know, review, um, you know, the, the practices you have in place with them. Um, yeah, it would be a, I think a decision, um, you know, between you and your clients. All right, do we have any more questions out there? If you have questions you'd like to ask right now, let's uh, put those in the Q&A section. Uh, in the meantime, Jesse, could you go back to the slide where they can have the information on where to contact you? Yeah. Let me get there. So okay. those are the two options. Um, and we are, we're monitoring that code violations uh, email address for, for both violations and for questions and we'll get back to you. For folks who, um, who are now identifying that they uh, are fit, fit under personal services rather than limited healthcare, um, you know, to follow up, absolutely welcome to join uh, this afternoon's webinar. Um, we will be presenting um, fairly similar information um, I, but it certainly at the very least, if you register for the webinar, uh, you will get the follow-up information from the chamber uh, specific to personal services. So I, I, would, I would encourage you to, to, to watch the webinar and participate in the Q&A there, um, but at the very least do register uh, so that you're getting that follow-up from the chamber. Great, Zach. So seeing that we don't have any more questions, I wanna remind everybody that we'll have a session next Tuesday at noon. You can register on the Boulder Chamber's website. This is for all Boulder, Boulder County um, businesses that allows you to kind of see the final orders and see some access to some of the resources that are being created, including the signs that Jesse has mentioned. Uh, in addition, we'll be bringing on, if possible, people that can help with some best practices. Um, if you have any questions in the meantime, please ask them through either the document with the uh, checklist or send them directly to these, um, to these sites. Uh, if you just have my email because I was the one that sent out your uh, confirmation and you have a question, I can also forward that on for you as well. Um, we wanna make sure that our businesses um, get their questions answered and are able to open safely when the stay at home or the safer at home order comes through. I wanna thank Boulder County Public Health for coming on today, um, for providing this information and for the continual dialogue we'll have with them um, through this process by industries. And I wanna thank our partners in the other chambers and economic development in cities um, for getting this information out, out and helping us um, to better educate all of our businesses and, and residents. And lastly, I wanna thank you for participating. Um, we will be sending out that checklist after this meeting uh, again, and I want to purchase. I want to continue having dialogue with our businesses um, about what we're going through and how we can move forward. So everybody, stay healthy, um, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.